previous section we just set up our simulator or emulator whichever you prefer and so now we're ready to begin actually running this app every time we run a project in Android Studio we do have to run it through a simulator or emulator even if we're not actually using it even if we're just using print statements we still have to have one set up so now that's down we can start actually running this guy now before we go ahead and run it we have to realize that nothing particularly interesting is going to happen here our function is essentially empty although it has a comment, this is a comment by the way, completely ignored by the compiler, nothing is actually runnable within this function. So why don't we make things a little more interesting, let's have this function actually do something. Um, a typical thing that you might want to do is just print something out or log something to the console. That's going to be done through the use of log statements rather than using Kotlin's print function, we have to log stuff through Android Studio via a log function. Okay, So I just pressed enter and note that it imported util.log. So we're going to log a log.d and know that it takes a tag and the actual message here. So the tag is just some kind of way of identifying this one. I'm just going to call this main activity. I typically just do the activity name that we're logging it from. And then after this, we'll need some actual value here. So um, we can put whatever we want. Let's just say hello guys in here or something. And now every time this button is pressed, it's going to execute this code, which in our case will just be logging a statement. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly run this. Hopefully we still have that emulator running from before. Okay, this might just take a second. Just going to pause this until it's done. All right, and now that it's done, let's open up our log monitor. Okay, this is just contains a bunch of information about uh, the loadup. For example, here's a log.d, here's a log.i. If there were any errors, it would be a log.e, so on and so forth. So now every time I'm pressing this button, note that this thing is being logged down here. So this main activity is the tag, and then it just says, hello, guys. That's the actual message I'm printing out. So log statements are very useful. Like I said, the actual uh, print function doesn't work in Android or in Kotlin, not in Android Studio, at least, because we have to use, again, these log statements to print stuff to the console. Okay, So that's what the log cat is for, really. Now, this still isn't very interesting. I mean, we're still only interacting with one element, so we might as well not have created this variable at all. So let's do something with this. At the very least, let's get the text from the text view and then log that instead. OK, so what we can do is um, instead of logging our hello guys, we can get the text from this text view through the get text or just simply the text method. So we're going to get our text view dot text. OK, dot to string. Whoops, to string, because we do want the string form. And we're just going to store this in a variable. So let's call this something like text view text. So now when this button is pressed, it's going to get whatever text it finds in the text view. It's going to turn it to a string. And then we would simply want to print out that text instead, text view text. OK. Be careful, however, because every time we print something using a log statement, it has to be in string form. So this means if I hadn't converted this to a string, it wouldn't be valid. Similarly, if I tried to print out, let's say, the number 5, that's also not valid because 5 isn't a string. I'd have to convert this 5 to a string by passing in maybe string dot value off, or actually that's a Java method. I could just do like 5 dot to string or create a variable that represents 5, turn that into a string, so on and so forth. Just as long as you are logging a string message and not any other kind. So in this case, let's go ahead and rerun it. You can do so simply by clicking on the play button again, and it will just uh, stop the previous session, rebuild the Gradle, and then rerun the application. So at this point, we have two elements interacting with each other. The button is going to get some property from the text view and then log it. So let's open up logcat again. Now when we press this, it takes a text from the text view, intro to Android, and is now printing that out. Similarly, although the text view contains static text, which means it can't be edited by the user, the text value can be edited um, overall. So what I can do maybe is uh, in, I would print out my text view's text, and then maybe I want to change my text view's text to the button's text. For this, I have to get the view or the view that is being interacted with on this press button action. So this view is going to represent my button, but I have to cast it to a button first. So I'm going to say val button is equal to view as a button. Okay, And that's the import up there. And this now casts this generic view type to a specific button. And now I can get the text from that. So I can say val button text is equal to button dot text dot to string. And now maybe I want to set my text view to contain that text. So I can say text view text dot text or dot set text whatever we want oh that's actually text view text so we want text view 
text is just going to be equal to my now button text string. So we've got a couple of things going on here. We are first guessing the current text views text as a string, and then we are, well, we're going to log it eventually, but then we're going to change the text views text, but we're not going to log that change, okay? So let's take a look at what kind of behavior we're going to get. So we press that, it says intro to Android, and then changes the text to press me, and now all it's going to do is say press me from now onwards, because this is now the text, okay? So there you have it, a couple of elements interacting with each other. Um, this, again, isn't a particularly exciting scenario, but in the future, a very typical interaction is an edit text button and a text view in which we can take the text from the edit text, that'll be the text that the user enters. Then we can change the text views text to contain that when the button is pressed. That's a very typical beginner kind of interaction. Okay, so we looked at a couple of different things here. Um, I am kind of going over the hour point, so I'm going to cut this one short. What I would encourage you to do is maybe add a few more elements to your page. Maybe actually try that text view, edit text, and button interaction. So um, maybe move your text view down to the bottom put an edit text in its place, and then try getting text from the edit text that the user enters, then when the button is pressed, outputting that text into our text view, and then just try that maybe with a few different elements. Once you're ready to move on, we'll cover the very final section in this tutorial that's just going to be a really quick look into how to use the debugger.